All right, well, greetings from my parents. Beautiful property here in Australia. Unfortunately, the reason I'm here is kind of a shitty one. It's nice to be here, but as you would have seen from the title of this video, I was here to attend a funeral. Unfortunately, I just, I just lost my best friend. So the reason for me doing this video is I just wanted to talk about it really. I wanted to talk about our friendship and share the experience with you. You know, making these videos is how I like to express myself and this is going to be kind of a tribute to him. You know, this video is not monetized or anything like that. This is just something I really want to do. So Simon and I met back in 2001, uh, we were just teenagers at the time and we both had a lot of common interests, you know, we are both really into cars and he had, a, he had a really cool Holden Commodore that I loved and a great sound system in it. We both shared the love for music, cars and, you know, going out and hanging out with friends and socializing and just being kids basically. So if you know the story about me owning a business and owning a cafe, it was actually with him. We, <laughs> I mean, it started off as a joke. You know, he, he told me the owner of the cafe was selling and you know, it wasn't doing all that well. And the owner wanted to sell for basically for enough money to break even at that point. And I told him, like, I was just joking. He hadn't quite figured out my sense of humor at that point. And I told him, hey, I'll go hard with you. This would be great. Like, let's buy it. Uh, and he took me seriously. So he started looking, his dad was an accountant. He started looking into looking into the books and he came back to me a short time later and said, hey, you know, the place actually used to make great money. We should like give it serious thought about buying it. So, <laughs> I mean, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life at that point. And he didn't, you know, we were just kids straight out of high school. And and so we did it, we, we bought it, we got a business loan and, and we had it for five years. And man, it was just such an exciting time to be growing up. You know, we're at an age, we're 18 years old. And, our friends are either going to university and studying and or, or, or starting off new jobs and starting at the bottom you know you treat it like shit as, as a youngster at the bottom of any company and we were two kids just running a business and <laughs> doing whatever we wanted it was amazing so in that time we really we grew up together you know even though 18 you're technically an adult we were kids you know mentally definitely still kids and we got to go through becoming adults becoming the men that we were kind of adults i guess <laughs> adults to the level that we are um, but we got to do that together and, and we learned so much at a very young age you know we learned because we we're working for ourselves we both learned a very good work ethic and that's why we both went on to be successful after that we learned so much about communication in this time and that's the thing that I take away the most is that we learned how to how to be adults and, and function together in a business partnership we were best friends when we went in and we went through a period in the middle where we actually we, we didn't get along at all we we're basically we just considered ourselves like business partners for a while and we weren't friends. We didn't socialize outside of work. We didn't talk about anything that wasn't work related. But then towards the end, we, we learned how to be friends again and learn how to communicate and really learn how to understand each other. And we learned the importance of really, you know, being open and communicating and not holding in feelings and building up resentment. Just if, if something bothered you the slightest, we would just talk about it and discuss it as adults and break it down and then, and then figure out how to make the situation better for both of us. We had the business for five years and we did incredibly well out of it, you know. We bought it quite cheap and, you know, we, we built up the business over those five years and, you know, we were paying ourselves all the way along the way and the first year was tough, the second year was a little bit easier and then it got easier and easier and then, then we were cruising basically towards the end and eventually we were offered a crazy amount of money to sell. It was five times what we originally invested in it and we took that opportunity but after we sold the shop we basically <laughs> two kids with a whole lot of money so we took the next oh probably close to a year we took off and we just went off went traveling i went to or we both went to the us we did a road trip through the us we started off on the east coast we bought a we bought a motorhome an rv and we drove from one side of the Mer of america to the other over the period of God, a little over a month i think we spent on the road and it was just such an amazing time. That was back in 2000, I want to say around 2006. And just the experience was so cool. You know, there was no iPhones, there's no GPS. We were using paper maps and just aimlessly driving across the country. It was, you know, one of the most amazing experiences of my life and the beginning of my, my adult traveling addiction, really. <laughs> After that, we decided to have a go at being flatmates together. You know, I knew so many people th that have moved out with friends, you know, moved out with other roommates and it just ended up being like a total disaster and the people would fight and eventually hate each other and it would just cause all these problems. So for us, it was a little bit of a gamble to move in together, but we thought we could do it because, you know, of our relationship from working together for so long. And he actually, like, you know, we had the perfect, like, living arrangement. So I lived with Simon the entire time that I was here in Australia, right up until the point where I left to go, to go move overseas back in 2017 off to Korea. You know, I'd had partners living with me on and off 
at some point and he did as well and the whole thing was just great and as I look back on it you know there's amazing memories of us living together as well. So back in, I think it was 2014, Simon was diagnosed with a brain cancer. Um, and this was like a total roller coaster ride, you know. At first it was quite serious, he had a tumor, had it removed, and everything was looking really good for, God, it, was, it felt like for years, you know. It, it wasn't really something we thought about anymore. It was, you know, the problem was gone. And then it was like a few years down the line, an unrelated similar thing happened. And, you know, he'd had various operations and surgeries throughout the years. It's only sort of in the last year that, that this last one came up and it was in an area that it couldn't be removed and it, and it became quite a serious thing. When I was here back in March, he called me up for some help with some things. He was selling a car and he wanted some help to get rid of it. And at that time, he'd started to lose his sight, which was just, it was a horrible thing to see. And, you know, in a way, I could see that he was starting to accept what was happening, you know, to come back. It was untreatable, uncurable, and it was just, reality was kind of kicking in at this point. You know, he told me, I could see when he told me, it was one of the hardest things he's ever had to say out loud. He really had a hard time to, to even be able to start the conversation. The doctors told him, you know, it could be a few months, it could be a few years, you're not sure, but you need to start getting your affairs in order, you know, get a will written up and all these things. And that's a horrible thing to, have to have to accept as a person I think and you know it's a really hard thing to hear and for someone our age it's not something that we think is ever going to happen to us so you know seeing that transition of the of him accepting it was really tough to watch and then you know over the next few months is when it became really hard for him. Simon's really lucky that he's had like a super supportive partner and they've been together eight years uh, we, we all live together and we all got along great and you know, I was so happy that, that he had someone by his side with him throughout the whole thing. And, you know, he's got a great network of friends that were there the whole way through, all the way into the end. And for as shitty as this situation was, he was just so lucky to have these amazing people in his corner with him the whole way through it. So the funeral was two days ago now, and it was, I mean, I want to say it was beautiful. It's, it was a very sad experience, but it was a beautiful service and huge turnout. Lots of people that I hadn't seen for years and got to reunite with. and. The whole experience was, uh, it, it, it made it all really real, so it was tough. You know, I was one of the people that got to carry the coffin and, you know, the first time I saw the coffin is when it became really real and it was something that I could see. Many people around me, they struggled with the exact same thing. As soon as you see it, it's like, that's when it really hits you and, you know, the service, the service was beautiful. His sister gave an amazing eulogy. You know, his partner gave a great speech and his best friend, who's actually a very close friend of mine, she gave an amazing speech. I gave a speech which was, you know, I, I wasn't nervous. I wasn't uncomfortable or anything until the second I, I stood up to go talk and I was just overcome with emotion. It was, it was really difficult to get out. People tell me afterwards that I did a great job. I tried to tell some funny stories to lighten the mood a little bit and, and, and tell some you know nice sentimental stories as well. It was an honor to be, just to be a part of the whole event. One nice thing to come from all this is just sort of being like totally reunited with like a whole bunch of people that I haven't seen or spoken to for many years and hearing all these great stories of things we'd done and, and ways that we'd sort of touch people's lives in the past. And you know, so many of these stories I'd, I'd completely forgotten about. So it was really nice to sort of relive these experiences. And it's such a cliche for anyone that's passed away to say, oh, he was the nicest person ever. But Simon really was, he was, he was that person. He was that really genuine person that everyone loved. And, and you could really see that in the turnout for the funeral on the day. Well, I'm going to finish up here. Um, Simon, Simon's like a brother to me and I'm, I'm going to miss him. But as I said at his funeral, um, you know, it's easy to be sad that he's gone. But instead I look at it like, I, I, I feel privileged for the time we got to spend together. And, you know, for the memories that I have from, from all the amazing experiences that we've shared together. I miss you, bro.